morning and welcome to the Pelican Sports Post Game Show, LSU 45, Ole Miss 16. A little bit of rain, big crowd early, loud crowd early. Buddy, the Tigers get it done. They're now 5-0. and And congratulations to you, TK. You did this a couple years ago, although, you know, we're not going to brag about last week's 0-5. But, hey, you had it and uh, only two points off, 43-16. Uh, you know, impressive at times. LSU looked really good early on, as we all saw. Got a little sloppy. You know, I, I'm a little aggravated with a couple things here as we get into the early morning. This will be the last day of September 30th uh, of the, the month. And TK, I thought Ole Miss was dirty. They hit out of bounds way, way too many times. Of course, the spicy hothead that I am, especially on that last thing, I would have taken that guy by his helmet and rammed him against the wall. So it's a good thing he didn't get a piece of me uh, after that. And uh, But LSU, a couple of disconcerting things. They didn't really sack the quarterback that much. They were around. Uh, let's give uh, number 10 for Ole Miss credit. Uh, Tamu was pretty darn good at times. Uh, then again, uh, LSU, hey, looked really good at, at times. But TK, can they play a full 60 minutes? You're going to have to play 60 minutes to beat some of these top 10 teams. We all know Georgia and Alabama coming into Tiger Stadium. And they got a big one next week against Florida. So uh, high B grades. It was an A early on, but for the most part, you hope nobody got hurt seriously. And you certainly hope that, um, you know, they played a lot of people on the offensive line. So you, you look at this, a lot of positives tonight. Yeah, a lot of positives, and you're right on the injury thing. Of course, a little bit later, we're going to visit with Brian Lazar from TigerBait.com. He'll be at the stadium. Ronnie Rance from uh, Jumbo Sports Network and anything they have on the injuries. The one, you know, Cushenberry, this guy's been playing outstanding. Let's hope that he is okay. That looked like a cramp, I'm hoping. Yeah, so anyway, but the bottom line is, buddy, they got it done. They were supposed to win. They did win, and they, it was separated, okay? They're much better than Ole Miss. But I agree with you. Ole Miss, very dirty, cheap shots, chippy. You know, uh, you know, I saw them popping off one time when they were down, way down and all that. I mean, I, you know, I don't like all that kind of stuff. But, you know, LSU held their own. They did what they had to do. Grant Delpit, buddy, this guy has emerged uh, in some regards higher than Devin White or, as, as being a top defensive guy. Now, it's a team thing. We know that. But uh, this guy has been fabulous. Every time I say Devin White didn't have that great a game, he ends up with double-digit tackles. But I did not think Forty played his best game tonight. Grant Delpit is no doubt. He is becoming uh, a, a big leader. And uh, this is the second time this season that he had an interception early on in the first possession of the opposing team. Of course, he did it against Auburn and uh, now did it again uh, tonight covered a lot of ground on that INT, had a sack later on. Uh, number nine has been banged up a little bit. They certainly need to make sure he's good to go. Next week in the swamp, Dan Mullen goes back to Stark Vegas and beats Mississippi State. You know what I liked the best about that game? They actually played it in three hours and ten minutes. That's unheard of now, TK. Hey, a couple of comments on Facebook Live. Best quarterback performance by an LSU quarterback in a long time. Uh, also got some text messages jumping. Uh, uh, will LSU <coughs> be favored against Florida? Mm -hmm. I think four or five points, buddy. You're better than that. Uh, I, I must say three or four, yeah. Hey, let's get to our phone lines. That's one thing that we, we're proud of here at the Pelican Sports Post Game is that you can get right in there. Let's go to Bill and Gonzalez. Bill, you're on the Post Game Show. Hey, TK and buddy. How y'all tonight? Good morning, Bill. <laughs> no, it ain't Bill. Oh, Frank, what's up? It said Not Bill. Much, my man. Okay. That's all right, Frank. Uh, you know, they don't want to identify you the last couple of uh, weekends. You're in the uh, protective... Uh, uh, secrecy deal here the last couple of weeks, huh? I, I don't know. I, I know one day I'm tired. Well, we appreciate you staying up. Give us your thoughts, Frank. I tell you, uh, they look great the first half, and then it looks like that second half, they kind of get a little mediocre every once in a while. I, I, I don't, that's what I can't understand. Now, I will admit, Joe Burrow, he gave it all. He, I think he tried to pick them up, but I don't know. They just 
see them once they get a lead, they, you know, they don't care too much anymore. The stats have proven it out. Uh, I don't think that LSU's had a very a big point differential against their opponents uh, in the third quarter. Uh, we know they've finished some games out. They got up on Miami 33-3. to We we know they got up uh, 24-0, and, and obviously uh, last week uh, with Louisiana Tech, same old song. So, TK, I think this is a week that Coach O is going to probably address. Look, guys, we've got to play 60 minutes. And that uh, that that uh, before you jump to Georgia, you got Florida. Felipe Franks, formerly an LSU commit, coming in here to Tiger Stadium, and uh, I mean uh, uh, to to uh, the swamp, and then of course Georgia, Mississippi State, and Alabama. So Frank, what do you think about five and zero? Oh? Some of the guys in here thinking they were going to move up to number four in the country. I don't think so. I think Notre Dame is. is I, can't, sir- I can't see them moving up. Yeah, uh, I don't either. I see them staying I mean, at five. It was, but they don't get me wrong. I mean, they beat the spread and everything. I mean, but it they. They didn't do it in a, I don't know how to explain it. Uh, they didn't do it in a convincing way, I guess. I don't know. Well, listen, uh, it, this kind of game, frankly, there's one other thing that kind of irritated me. Tired of all this rain in Tiger Stadium. TK, whoever came up with that thing that never, never rains in Tiger Stadium <laughs> I don't know on a Saturday night? I, 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 I don't think they want to be out there playing in that. Well, stuff. no, and... and I almost drowned in that 44-3 to Miami win back in the late 80s. <laughs> and I was in the upper deck that well, night. But, uh, yeah. No, it, 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 that, I think they need to stop with that because uh, and that's enough rain. We, we've had enough. To, they can uh, back that off and all that good stuff. Well, look, y'all have a good night, and all I'm right, going to catch Frank. the river on the bar. Thank you, uh, Frank. Appreciate right, it. Let's, now let's go to Bill and Gonzalez. Bill, you're on the post-game show. Hey, Tommy, buddy. So we're all up late tonight, huh? <laughs> Good morning, Bill. I look, I saw you on TV. You look like you could stay up till one thirty, two o'clock if you needed to. Oh, uh, I feel like I could. I tell you what, it's great to be five and zero, guys. No doubt. That, that's the stat that matters. You know, you can talk oh. about all these where they rank offense, defense, Joe Burrow's numbers. Five and zero is the stat that matters, and right now, that's all it can as good as it can be. Hey, Bill, I thought uh, this was Joe Burrow's best game. Not only passing, obviously they used him uh, running the football a little bit. Did not like that cheap shot the Ole Miss player had at the end of the game there. Like I said, I'm hot-headed. I'd have grabbed his helmet and been slinging it off his head. But uh, lo and behold, um, let's give Coach O a little bit of credit at the start of the show, Bill. A couple things. He went for it on fourth down. Joe Burrow's had this in, insane uh, uncanny idea of being able with his uh, voice inflection to call people. Uh, and, and, you know, he makes that little yep. head bob and, and got him the first down. So uh, Coach O's been, been good to go, but there's something about playing 60 minutes and coming back out and playing a little bit second half better. But once again, uh, TK had to love this game. Bill, he picked 43-16. It ended up 45-16. Now he wants to he wants 100 pounds of man to No, no, I got to tell you a funny story okay. about that. Okay, Trey. Go ahead. Go ahead, Bill. All right, uh, buddy. Yes, sir. I wouldn't be, with my spinal cord injury of 32 years, I wouldn't be messing with that uh, a defensive back that's the size of Joe Burrow, you know. He's uh, a little bit bigger than me. Well, I, he's a lot bigger than me, too, but I I, I just, I, you know, that's uncalled for. And you're talking about a oh, quarterback. Yeah, it, is. it is. If it was out on the street, that's a whole different topic. About Coach O, y'all know I like the guy, even though um, Gordy Rush didn't take my call at uh, T.J. Ribs this past Wednesday. What? But, he, um, he clipped you? Yeah, I, I stayed online about the whole, uh, about 55. Five minutes or something, and finally looked at the wife, and I said, they're wrapping it up. I'm off the phone. Let's get our go bag, and we'll go talk to the coach and his wife. Look, I think that I'm in agreement with y'all how you started off the show. The Tigers, um, you know, they look a little down in the second half. Of course, they have a big lead to start off, and then other team does something, and bam, they're getting into it. So they're working. I think that's a work in progress. I like Coach O. I like what he's done with this team, and it's quite evident that Ole Miss right now is a very undisciplined team. Their defense is not that good, missed way too many tackles for an SEC team, and um, LSU took advantage like they should have. 
The huh? offense is something to be reckoned with. Maybe the elements could tell them some, but, um, you know, and, of course, they got dinged up. The first half, I thought they were a mash unit, and then some Tigers got dinged up, and fortunately it doesn't look like any of the Tigers were seriously injured, thank God. But it's like, like we started off this conversation, we're 5-0, and oh, and we go to – Drain the swamp next week, right? <laughs> yeah, and look, Bill, I got a little, uh, I got a little trick for you. You ready? Go ahead. Call in next week as William. Oh, okay. You got it. Use my. Uh, use your alias. Given name. Yeah. You're, yeah, you're, you're right. Give a name. My there you go, name. Bill. There I'm you telling go. you how to uh, how to beat the system, my man. Oh, and I got to say one thing. Right. Uh, two more things before I split here tonight. Go ahead. That is, what occurred last night on campus, because I went there for the unveiling of the uh, Cannon statue. What the Cannon family did, in accordance to what we've seen Thursday and Friday this week out of our nation's capital, they need, the people in Congress, especially on that leftist liberal side, need to take a lesson in life from us here in Louisiana, especially Billy Cannon's family. I thought that was not just classy, I thought it was very very graceful and apt, if you will, because let's put it this way. I'm 60 years old. In the old days, back when I watched football with McClendon growing up, and it was just procedure. If something happened to somebody in another sport, you know, the chaplain was there to give a prayer or something for it, and then you go on with whatever you were scheduled to do. So that's the first thing. I think I'm leaders need to take a look at what happened here the past few days and god bless uh sims family and um you know they had a ticker tape on espn they arrested somebody for it i think today yep so uh, let the law take care of him thank you bill and, uh, sleep well man take care see you okay. next week uh, PK, you were going to follow up well a couple of things one you know the score 43 16 and i turned in Trey Bloss was on the radio with me a couple of times a week. He's listening now. I sent him that prediction the other day. He said, that's an odd prediction. Uh -huh. And I said, well, I'm an odd predictor. Okay, but the anyway. The crystal ball came back. All right, yeah. Uh, here's a couple of text messages. Listen, Ole Miss is a dirty team, real dirty. I yeah. agree with that 100%. Mm. I mean, that, 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 that's just bad. That, that's not a call for um, LSU quarterback Joe Burrow. Here, I'm glad we got this. Love the helmets and the Billy Cannon statue. Yeah. I thought the numbers on the helmet looked great. Really cool. I think they should do that once a year. Uh, you know, Alan was talking earlier. You know, a couple years ago they wore all white against Auburn. I think they should do that once a year. Keep it with the school colors. I'm not a, like Tulane wore that god awful black stuff this weekend. I think that's you know you got to have a gimmick if you're no good. But they did win. But uh, and the Billy Cannon statue, I think, I, I've only seen a picture. I haven't seen a person. I think it looks spectacular. Yeah, he did not I, yeah. want a helmet on. That was his wish, not to have a helmet on in the statue. And, and I, it's posted on our Pelican Broadcast and Facebook page if you scroll a little bit. So, uh, we'll let's see. One more. Uh, uh, Vegas has been wrong all year. They were a lot better than a 10-point favorite against Ole Miss. That's true. Easy to say right now when the game is over. Interesting. Remember, we talked last week. You asked me. I said 13 to 15. It came out 13 and a half, 14, and then it moved back down. And then it, I, I don't know what it, it actually played out at 11 or whatever it was. Nine and a half. Nine and a half. Yeah. Well, that means there was a lot of Ole Miss money. But um, b bottom line is that uh, Tigers um, – and, and, you know, Brian Ge Greasy was, was mentioning. He didn't know if LSU was the number fifth-ranked team. All right, we got to get to a break. We welcome your calls, 225-928-4910, or send a text message, as many of you are doing, to area code 504-689-9246. Appreciate all the good folks on Facebook Live, on the WUBR TuneIn app on the smartphone, and, of course, Pelican Sports TV. Don't forget this 90-minute program re-airs tomorrow morning. Back-to-back -back airings on Pelican Sports TV, 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. And, of course, well, it'll be pinned on the Pelican Broadcast and Facebook wall. It'll be pinned up top if you want to check it out that way. We got some more calls. We got some text rolling in. Let's get a break in and come back with more. LSU 5-0, heading to the swamp next week for a 2.30 kickoff against the Florida Gators. Buddy Sanji, Tommy Chrysan, we're ba we'll be back on the Pelican Sports Post Game Show. Text Hubby. Can't wait for
for tonight. Where are we meeting? Tonight? Date night? Oh. Find sushi restaurant. Let's try Wasabi Sushi. Route to sushi. The destination is on your left. Play our song. Pioneer in-dash systems with Apple CarPlay. Get yours installed today at your local Mesa retailer. Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Fruge Jr. and I am a general dentist at Fruge Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we get back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. Hi, I'm Jordy Heltberg for Tremonti's Meat and Seafood Market at 12451 Old Jefferson Highway. Chairman's Reserve Steaks, their pork, their chicken, their seafood, top of the line. Primo barbecue pits, Icy Tech coolers, they can go anywhere and cater anything for you. Go to 751-7665 to call Tremonti's Meat and Seafood Market, where good meat ain't cheap and cheap meat ain't good. Tremonti's Meat and Seafood Market. Are you ready for this year's formal events? It's weddings, homecoming, Mardi Gras, prom, pageant. Debbie's Bridal is having an inventory blowout sale. Don't be left out. Prices range from 20% off to 80% off. Happening now. Debbie's Bridal, Burnside in Gonzales. Cypress Lake Apartments are conveniently located off Segan Lane in Baton Rouge. A CLK multifamily management property. Come see this community which has many amenities including swimming pools, fitness room, playground and much more. One, two and three bedroom apartments. Stop by Cypress Lake Apartments, call 225-293-6789 or go online, live at cypresslakeapts.com. tell you all about School Board Sports Grill and Catering. They've been getting it going over there and they want to invite you. You, everybody you know, all your friends next Thursday, Friday, Saturday, October 4, 5, 6. Food, fun, family, music, sports, video walls, soundstage, ball snow crabs. It's every day is a tailgate at scoreboards. No question about it. You need to get over there. The place is looking fabulous. You you spent a half hour looking at the memorabilia in there as well. It's on Corsi Boulevard next to Anton's Fine Jewelers, a little bit east of Airline and Corsi. It's on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Connect right there and you'll see all the announcements. Scoreboards, Sports Grill and Catering, Corsi Boulevard in Baton Rouge. Our phone number, 225-928-4910. Text message lines, area code 504-689-9246. 
Uh, LSU wins 45-16. Let's go to James in Lafayette. James, you're on the postgame show. Well, you got to feel pretty good. 5-0. and Okay, the talk was, okay, our, our secondary didn't look that good against Louisiana Tech. I saw I discounted that. Look, we covered really well. The old Miss quarterback, you know, early on he looked like we, we might have some trouble, but we had some pressure on him. And then, look, our secondary covered really well. We looked like an LSU secondary. Okay, so we handled that. Um we, we pretty much dominated that football game. I know we want to be a little bit more physical, and I've been saying that we want to be a little bit more physical, and that's something that, that might need to happen. But as a football team, yeah, we look pretty good, guys. Now, the game next week, I think Florida is a more physical football team. So we're going to see how we match up more physically on the road at Gainesville, trying to win two in a row in Gainesville. Not that easy. I think we're going to be able to do this. Uh, we seem really well coached, guys. I don't know if it's Innsminger on the offense. That's got to be a huge thing. But just overall, we seem like a well coached football team. We know what we want to do. We know where we're supposed to be at a given time. Um, I like our chances, guys. I'm just going with it. Florida on the road next week. I'm very satisfied with this 45-16 win. Um, so well, I think tonight was a physical game, James. I mean, when you look at a couple of Tigers got bumped up, a few of the Rebels got bumped up and bruised a little bit. It was a yeah. physical game. Field was wet. It was raining most of the game. And sometimes it gets more physical there because everybody runs up on the ball of their feet. You can't plant your feet in the ground. You, you're trying not to slip, not to fall. So it kind of changes it. And uh, I, I thought it was a physical game. Again, as one of the text messages said earlier, I mean, Ole Miss, I thought, was very, very dirty. And, and LSU's got to be able to let, you know, let that water run off the back. Pardon the pun with all the rain. But uh, you got to, you know, let that go because you don't want that penalty when you You're right about that. You don't want to be hollering at the uh, other team on the sideline. Yeah, no, yeah. And, and Greedy Williams, I mean, hopefully he's disciplined or not. You cannot have that. Uh, no question uh, about that. Yeah, well, James, uh, I saw the Florida-Mississippi State game. I know what you're talking about, the physicality. Uh, they, they they were really sending the kitchen sink. And, and if you missed the Florida-Mississippi State game, which was a prelude to LSU and Ole Miss on ESPN, they blitzed a ton, and they brought pressure. Uh, let's give a little tribute. Uh, Shout out and tribute. Donovan Campbell started his first game left guard. at left guard. A Adrian McGee started at left tackle. They did put Chasen Hines at left guard as well as Traore came in at left tackle. They moved McGee over to right tackle. They had a few penalties, but for the most part, uh, I, I like the fact that they developed some depth there, James. But I will tell you this. Now, they're going to have to uh, – they're going to have to, to pick up the blitz that Florida brings. And, you know, I've said this before, and, I, you know, I don't want to beat a dead horse to, you know, whatever. But uh, I like Joe Barrow running, but, you know, you, you take one shot. We saw it today with Clemson. Here's uh, Trevor Lawrence. He just replaces Kelly Bryant, who says, okay, you're going to bitch me. I'm going bye-bye. You got a registered freshman that has to come in and, and, and win the game. But when you have a concussion – that knocks you out for the game, and then you're in pro concussion protocol for a week or so. So uh, I, I just hope that uh, as they get into heavyweights with Florida and, and some of these other physical defenses, they might limit Burroughs running just a little bit, James. Well, buddy, you're exactly right, because I thought the same thing, because I liked Burrow, you know, running. He's, he really shows a lot of speed, a lot of physicality, what he can do. But I thought the same thing is like, we overplayed our hand just a little bit on that, and you saw the, the big turnover. He had a big turnover late in the first half. You, you can't just overly do it. I'm wondering if that is maybe a little bit because our own running game, and Ole Miss is not a really strong defense. I'm, I keep saying our own running game could be a little bit better, and maybe we're overcompensating with Burrow running a little bit. But you're right, we overplayed our hand with Burrow running, and I think we learned a little something. You can't do that. We want to stay away from turnovers, 
And you're going to put the man out there, injuries too. You're going to put the man out there, you're risking a lot. So I agree with you totally on that, buddy. Overall, we look good. Defense, the defense, I think, continues to look good. This Ole Miss team is capable of scoring some points. We're looking good. I feel good about our chances in Florida. It's going to be more physical. I want us to be more physical. Big game. All right, guys, I'm going to let you go. Thank you, James. Thank you, James. Appreciate you tuning All right. in. All right, a couple things, buddy. Um, this is getting ahead a little bit. What time do we think the Georgia-LSU game will be? We know it's 2.30 this week in Gainesville against Florida. If they're ever going to pull the eight-day rule, it'll be this week because they're going to want to see if LSU beats Florida. And then, you know, I'm not sure who Georgia plays, but uh, it's possible they could be back to back 230s. I mean, there's no yeah, rule. I, I there's think, no rule against that. I, I think I think 230 is what you're probably looking at. Then, by, uh, by the way, I'm thinking that uh, LSU three to three and a half four point favorite against Florida somewhere in that neighborhood. Here we go. Uh, I'll be damned. They made some beautiful catches tonight. Got a lot of work to do. Now here's the point that Allen was making earlier. They really need to play 60 minutes, yeah. not 30. Yeah. Even against Louisiana Tech, you had that little middle of the game when things didn't look great. So, you know, I, you know, when they played Southeastern, we hear this, you can't get up every week. Well, I think you should be able to get up every week, but I never played football at that level. But, I mean, when, when you play in an SEC opponent, the stadium was, was damn near full at kickoff. It was very loud. Talked to some people that were there. You got to play all sixty minutes, you know. And, you know, and if you're if if you're up forty nine nothing at half, like Bama was in the paycheck game against ULL, okay, you're gonna have other guys in the game. But you know, the bottom line is you got to play sixty minutes. And and if you look at everything we've seen, it's gonna take sixty minutes to beat Florida. Florida, Florida went into Starfield. Now maybe Mississippi State isn't as good as people thought at the beginning of the year. Time always bears out. Some people aren't as good as people thought. Some people are better, like LSU. <laughs> but uh, Florida, it's going to be a battle in the swamp. You, you know, at this point, uh, I, I remember there was some some groundswell uh, persuasion there. Mississippi State was the flavor of the month, and then A&M. You know, State was picked third, and A&M was picked fourth in the SEC West. And we don't know how it's going to turn out, but but obviously Mississippi State now with a couple of losses and and obviously A&M with a couple of losses. But, uh, look, uh, I, I still think LSU's missing a few few too many tackles. And uh, Coach O is, is going to um, uh, be pretty uh, hell-bent about the fact of cleaning up. Now, both of those turnovers tonight uh, were in deep in the – they were in the, in red, the zone. red zone. Yeah. yeah. And so not only did you uh, double the number of turnovers you had all year with two tonight – but you lost them. I think Burrow lost it right around the five-yard line and Brissett right around the lost, ten-yard line. And lost another one but was negated due to a face mask. So uh, got to clean all that up. Uh, uh, but once again, uh, when LSU needs to play, they're pretty darn good this year. Here's a text message statement. It's not a question. And this, is, this has happened here for a long time and it happens in a lot of schools. It says the fans need to stay. That's a problem, not just for LSU. You pay your money for your ticket, you don't have to stay. I saw a friend of mine commented on Facebook earlier, said, man, this is crazy. I'm looking it up. It looks like, you know, there's a mass exodus going on. I mean, uh, you're not going to get the fans to stay when it's raining in a game, well, a, a one-sided game, right? Yeah, that, that's the thing. You're up 28 to, what was it, 28-3 and a half or 28-6. Um, it's raining. It's late. People have been tailgating all that. Look, they will stay. They will stay for the Georgia game and the Mississippi State game and the Alabama game. But All right, look, we got to get to a break, then we got some phone callers we're going to get to. Uh, once again, LSU wins 45 16. They're 5 0. As importantly, they're 2 0 in conference play on the road in Gainesville next week against Florida. Buddy thinks LSU's a 3 4, 5 point favorite. No, 3 or 4. 3 or 4. We'll, we'll get those numbers out of Las Vegas uh, tomorrow. About 4 or 5 o'clock is usually when we get them. Let's take a break, come back, more phone calls, more text messages, Facebook Live, the TuneIn app uh, on your smartphone, and, of course, Pelican Sports TV. Stay with us. Creel Tree Service is a licensed and insured tree service providing tree and stump removal, topping, trimming, cabling, pruning, and fertilizing. We have free stump removal with takedowns, 
free estimates, affordable rates, and senior citizens discounts. Call 774-TREE. That's 774-8733. Get your yard ready for the warmer weather. If it deals with a tree, call me, Creel Tree Service. 774-8733. That's 774-TREE. When my wife and I started Relief Windows, what we were trying to do, what our goal was, to give a quality job to a homeowner. Everybody's scared of contractors. We wanted to change the mold of what that is. Not showing up on time, not answering the phone, somebody running with your money. The reason why you should pick Relief Windows to do your renovation of your home, windows, doors, hardy planker siding, is because of the experience, quality, service of our company. Service is everything we have. It's the foundation of our company. We're gonna show up on time, we're gonna do the job right, over 60% of our customers is customer referral. We're a local company here in Baton Rouge, built in Baton Rouge, staying in Baton Rouge. Okay. The job's not done until you're happy and we're happy. It's built the old fashioned way, with a handshake. Here at Relief Windows, it's honored to be official window door and signing company of LSU Athletics from one winning team to another. They said I could find you here. Why are you fishing? Our company's got to ship out two full color brochures and 20 color copies. You're killing me! It's done. Designed, printed, packaged, and shipped. How? You just got to know the right people. Baker Printing, the printing people. How come you get to fish in this private lake? Like I said, you just got to know the right people. You can know the right people, too. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. The Acord Eye Clinic has moved to a new office. Just minutes from the old office at 8280 YMCA Plaza Drive, Building 9. Dr. Shonda Acord and her staff welcome patients of all ages, including children and adults. They have a wide variety of frames and sunglasses, including Maui Jim. The Acord Eye Clinic features modern instruments and state-of-the-art technology including digital retinal scanning with Optomap. Hard to fit contact lenses, as well as professional care and service. Open Monday through Friday, eight till five. Call for an appointment, 225-767-EYES and visit the website, visionsource-br.com. The Acord Eye Clinic looks forward to seeing you is an important announcement. If you're between 50 and 85 and worried about your loved ones, you can still get affordable life insurance for peace of mind. My life insurance coverage is guaranteed, and I was not required to get a medical exam. I had high blood pressure and diabetes, and I got my coverage with one telephone call. No exam necessary. I'm a smoker, and I wanted to take care of my family. I called to get my life insurance and my affairs in order. I wanted to do the right thing. Call Final Expense No Exam Insurance. Your rates are guaranteed and will never increase. I called and learned that this insurance cannot be canceled, even if you get sick or gain weight. And there are no restrictions on how my beneficiaries use the money when I'm gone. Approval was easy, and the price was right. I wanted to do this for my children. Call 800 654 9927. 800 654 9927. break up early anymore for the Ryder Cup. We continue with the Pelican Sports Radio, uh, Pelican Sports Post Game Show. It's a little bit late, folks. It's <laughs> actually Sunday morning. I apologize. The hours are acting up, but we're going to make it. We're going to live. Let's live with Paul from Shreveport. Paul, welcome to the Post Game Show. Hey, good morning, guys. How's it going? <laughs> good morning to you, sir. What's hey, up, I Paul? I phone so long, my pancakes are getting cold. I've been busy. <laughs> What's up, my man? You doing all right? Doing great. We didn't get any injuries on the offensive line, did we? 
Uh, we got Brian Lazar coming uh, a little more than 20 minutes from now. Cushion Barry looked like he got a cramp at the end, and I think they get Sadiq Charles back. Of course, Coach O was telling uh, people that they were going to get Brumfield back in a couple weeks. Look, uh, Donovan Campbell, Paul, that's a big uh, – to get him involved, we've been waiting three years for this guy to do something. And he got his first start, uh, and Jason Hines obviously uh, played some of the game as well. Traore played a little bit. Adrian McGee got back. So they, they are getting back, and it does look like they're going to have eight or nine of them. Uh, and, and, you know, these injuries, you're not going to get Ingram back this year, but uh, they are developing a little more depth on the offensive line. But, yeah, obviously, Cushenberry uh, will we'll verify. But I thought it was a, a cramp, Paul. Yeah. What was our total yards offense in this game? I got it for you right here, Paul. Uh, 573, what was it? I think that's what it was, buddy. Let me well, pull it. Uh, 570, uh, Paul, 573 total offense, 292 passing, 281 rushing. That's almost 50-50. Yeah. And uh, Joe Burrow, when's the last time an LSU quarterback led the team in rushing? Joe hmm. Burrow did that tonight. <laughs> Yeah. I tell you what, they uh, they dropped the ball on him a couple of times. He needs to make sure to switch that ball in his hand when he's running. But uh, I'd rather they run the Wildcat than run him. And uh, I'm surprised Miles Brennan didn't get in the game there at the end. What's up with that? Uh, interesting. We were talking about that at the station here. I thought that uh, I don't know what the deal was. Not only did... Well, think about it. If you don't... If... If you, you play him in the last four, he can still redshirt. Yeah, but he's not going to play in the last well, four. Well, I'm just saying, what happens something Burrow, then you got to play him. Yeah, right, right. So, but then you wouldn't lose him. So, you know, and you know, so a pet peeve of mine, okay? All these people that don't know what they're talking about with Jalen Hurts in Alabama, he played in his fifth game today, and everybody's having a, a fit that he blew his redshirt again. What nobody knows is he's graduating in December. Right. So he's wow. going to be able to transfer and be eligible for one year, wherever he may land, if that's what he wants to do next year. He's not worried about a red shirt year. Good friend of mine's on the coaching staff, and they are laughing their tails off at Bama with all these national media saying, oh, no, they're going to play him in the fifth game, blow his red shirt year. They don't even no, know what's going we, on. We knew that. But this is what Paul is talking about. If Joe Burrow gets hurt, you have a guy that has to go in and hadn't played one snap this, this year. Well, that's a good point, too, but uh, right, where, Paul? Where, where do you draw the line in the sand? If, if, if he gets hurt, Burrow gets hurt against Florida, you got a guy that hadn't played a snap. And, and so I think there's a lot of different ways to look at it. Yes, everybody knows Miles Brennan needs to gain weight, and it would certainly be beneficial if he could redshirt this year. But where do you draw the line when you give him a mop-up duty? And here's the other thing, too, though. You look at Ensminger calling his quarterback runs. Miles Brennan is not going to make the run that Joe Burrow. This no. was the most decisive north-south well, Joe Burrow got running the football team. We've had a couple of text messages. This was Joe Burrow's coming out party. No doubt. This is his best night by far. He as looked an LSU really good, Tiger. Paul. He was 18 for 25. That's 72%. See, I got that Holy Cross math on you, buddy. Mm -hmm. 292 yeah. yards, three hey, touchdowns, no oh, picks. He averaged oh, 10. Almost 11 yards a carry. He averaged 10.7 yards a carry. Nine carries for 96 yards, one touchdown, long gain of 35. This was the Joe Burrow party. I think he needs to be SEC Offensive Player of the Week again this week. I don't know everybody else's stats, but I think he should be it. Well, he won it when he threw for 47 percent. Yeah, so well, he's he's got to win it this week then. I, I don't know. Like you said, it depends hey, on all the guys. I'm pretty good at predicting right now, buddy. I think he's gonna win it. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to play Miles. He should maybe this week. Go ahead, Paul. <laughs> you only got two quarterbacks, and you better protect Miles. Uh, still, Burrow running the ball, do a wildcat or something. You only got two quarterbacks. Yeah. Miles Brennan is you got a, at a snap the entire season. Yep. And he's one play away from your starting quarterback. Yep. <laughs> but hey, great show. Uh, Boy, I tell you what, I don't think anybody's leaving two weeks from now when Georgia comes in the town to y'all. Well, no, but, you know, it, it's interesting. We talked they about this. They were pretty heavy y'all this morning on the campus. They, yeah. I mean, you had a good crowd out here uh, on campus the whole day. Frustrated with oh. this rain and weather, Paul. Second week in a row where the Mother Nature came in and, and kind of took away. 
Hey, your your opinion on this? We just had this discussion, Paul. You stay. Did you leave early? And if you did, was it weather related? I stayed at the end every time. I had a couple of text messages that said it was weather man. related. Most Makes most people. Nice. And you can justify that. Well, okay, well, I got, once you're wet, aren't you wet? Well, a lot of people want to go home and get out of the stuff and uh, relax. And, uh, heck, this was a late game. Paul? Yeah. Did you? But I'll tell you this. It sounded loud in the stadium at 8.15, though. In defense of the fans now, you know, I'm over here at a condo. I can just walk back and forth to the game. Yeah. These people are tailgating all day, and then they got to fight the traffic to get out of here. Sure. But everybody's pretty quick to create this habit of leaving at halftime, mm-hmm. regardless of what's going on. And I think if you notice, the third quarter of every game we've played, we've hit that lull. You know, well, I, but l- let's also point out, in there. let's also point out, Paul, it's not just LSU that sure. um, this happened, you know, this has happened at stadiums all across the country at all levels. So, you know, but and it, it's a it's a tough one. You know, to, you pay your money; it's your choice if you want to go. You know, and I know you got a handful of people that have to go for whatever the reason it is, but not the thousands and thousands that leave. But no, uh, Amber, my friend who works out there at a private party, reported to me earlier: really good crowd, even with some bad weather. As you said, buddy, the stadium was it was probably eighty-five thousand people in there at kickoff, and it was very loud. It looked good, a lot of the gold shirts, and it was hard to see the empty seats because they're gold. But uh, I, I thought the atmosphere, Paul, you were there. I thought the atmosphere at kickoff uh, w- was very good. Would you agree? Oh yeah, we haven't had that all season. I mean, yeah. you had Southeast Louisiana, you had Louisiana Tech, right? And uh, that from kickoff, that that crowd was ready to go. But well, the overriding stat is this: I, I don't know. Now, I did say five and one after six, but I did have them beating Florida. Paul, are you worried about that game? Or you think LSU is good enough to go to the swamp and win for a second consecutive year? Well, I'm just glad we got five victories because now we cover everybody saying we're going to go five and seven. So we got those five victories, so we're good there. But uh, always, uh, we'll take Florida. We'll take Florida. Well, I, think, I can tell you uh, this. I think we're a stronger team this year than, than we were last year when we beat them. You know, uh, it, it, it's going to set up to be a really great uh, ball game, and, and I agree with TK. I think CBS is probably going to grab LSU Georgia at 2.30. It's not as loud, but I can guarantee you, if that is a, a matchup between two teams in the top five, which it looks like it will unless LSU loses to Florida, then uh, you won't have to worry about anybody leaving early. That's what I'm saying. CBS gets the first pick, and I really don't know who else is playing ahead. Yeah, we're going to go through the schedule and look at it a little bit. We'll talk about that on radio this week. Thank you, Paul. Be careful going back tomorrow, man. All right, Paul. So uh, here's a text message on that topic about fans needing to stay. It was a late kickoff, but this is Death Valley. You can't stay the number one venue if you only stay two games a year. That, that's a valid point. I, I, I got to agree with that one. All right, we got a, another Paul on the line. Let's go to Paul in Mandeville. Paul, welcome to the Pelican Sports Post Game Show. Come on, PFM. Uh-oh. Paul. How are y'all doing? Okay, there we go. Good. Uh, good morning. It's a great day to be a tiger, my brother. <laughs> well, me, you know, yeah. look, you had it 42-21. Can you believe TK nipped you on the prediction? Well, look, if um, if they don't put the ball on the ground twice inside the 10, it could have it could have even got even more out of uh, control than it was. And I have no problem losing the prediction to TK when we walk out of the stadium with a W and 5-0, and o, my brother. That's the number that matters, 5-0. and o. That's right. That's right. And the rest of them don't matter. I agree. Hey, look, a couple observations. I did go to the game. Paco and I were at the game. Um, there were a bunch of people left early because of the rain, and, and, and I get that. And I don't think it was a score or a late-night issue. I do think that the, it was strictly weather-related. When you started looking at the radar, yep. we were really expecting much worse stuff coming from the south. So yep. 
look, it all worked out. We did stay to the end. I was glad we did. I figured, hey, we're already wet. You're not going to get more wet. So it was fine. Two things I saw from Burroughs sitting in the south end zone. We were up fairly high in that stadium club. Twice they had like a double uh, out route run, and the guy underneath wide open, nobody around him. But instead of going to that guy, Burrow threw the ball over the top of the defense twice for completions, and one of them was the touchdown to Jefferson. It's the difference between McMillan going 8 for 10 for 85 yards or Burrow going for the jugular, and I think that's what you need to beat the elite teams that we keep talking about. So it was really good to see that. Well, you know, Coach O has talked. They stole this from the Patriots. You know, you got to take eight shots at the end zone during a game. That'd be if you take eight every game, you know, you're going to get some of them to pay off. So, you know, and, and I go back to you know Bill Parcell said, you know, if a quarterback's not throwing interceptions, he he's not trying hard enough. You know, so that's and, right. And Brett Favre threw a million interceptions. He's one of the greatest of all time. Peyton Manning threw a lot of interceptions. Uh, but my point is, I think Joe Burrow has improved each week. He had his best night, his coming out party tonight. Statistically, this is his best night as an LSU Tiger. But again, the statistics are just something for Buddy and I to talk about during a week on the radio. The number that matters is 5-0, and and then they'll you know, try to make that 6-0 and next weekend in Gainesville. Still had a couple of drops. Racy McMath played a little yeah. bit. Donovan Campbell got in on the offensive line. Paul. They're developing a little bit of the depth on the offensive line. I, I think that shocked everybody with Campbell starting. That didn't really come out until he put it on Twitter, making or somebody, one of his family, put it on Twitter that uh, he was making his first start. They were very excited. Uh, Chase and Hines, of course, has done a great job. Brumfield's coming back in a, in a couple of weeks. Sadiq Charles, I do think you need Sadiq Charles back for uh, – for Florida. Now, if he comes back and plays left tackle, Paul, you could flip Adrian McGee back over to right tackle uh, to share reps with Deculus. Uh, certainly, uh, everybody concerned about Cushenberry, who has been the surprise of the offensive line. And my man Marshall, I predicted on the air that he'd score his first touchdown. I thought he was going to get there, but he didn't Four. quite make it. Uh, and, and I know you got to be happy because you and I have been talking about Jamar Chase, folks. This guy, when it's all said and done this year, uh, is going to be pretty special. And, and uh, you know, uh, D. Anderson had a few drops tonight, but Stephon Sullivan, hey, let's give him a shout-out too. He's developed into a pretty nice option on third down, Paul. Well, well, look, this is one of the things we talked about on Friday. If you show up to play LSU, you can't point to one receiver and say, we need to double-team this guy the whole time because that's who we need to take away. Or we need to flip our corner, follow this guy wherever he goes. Double whoever you want, we will hurt you somewhere else. And that's been the theme. It's been great to see them distribute the ball all over the field. Well, uh, Look, I, I, I thought in the third quarter we needed to run the ball and burn the clock too. But when they started going eight and nine guys in the box again, yep. we went right back to throwing the ball, and it was a beautiful thing. So, Paul, Paul, here's something for you. Nine different guys caught passes tonight. I think that's the most in the five games. Absolutely. I, I'd have Absolutely. to double-check that. Well, you had 18 completions. But nine different guys caught at least one pass tonight. That is a quarterback reading his progression, seeing the field, checking down whatever he's got to do to try to move the ball down the field. I got a better stat for you. What you got, 5-0? and oh? No. What? Who won your contest? Oh, You, I, you <laughs> did, and you picked against my LSU against Miami and Auburn, so quit giving yourself a you-know-what. Three touchdown passes going into the game, Paul. They got three tonight. They doubled their uh, Very, touchdown yeah, passes that's, that's tonight. That's a great point. So um, I, I thought Joe was on target. Uh, scrambling, but I'm going to tell you right now, folks, very, very critical. I watched Florida and Mississippi State, especially late, and Todd Grantham, their D.C., he's going to blitz, blitz, and blitz, and LSU better have somebody to stick their head up in there and, and pick up the blitz, or they're going to have to show, uh, you know, throw it a little quicker. But, uh, look, I, I think everybody agreed this was LSU's best game until – they had the second half lull again. Well, look, it, it, as far as picking up blitz, I, I trust the two backs we've been playing the most. 
I, I have no concerns there. Instead of worrying about what Florida's going to do to us, that was my whole point. Let them worry about what we're going to show up and do. Flip the script. They got a lot more to be concerned about than we do. And, and I'll leave you with this little tidbit. Everybody talking about Tua at Bama being the second coming or, or the first coming and the greatest quarterback in the history of quarterbacks. Hey, if we played uh, Abilene Christian, uh, Mandeville High School, <laughs> Ole Miss, and Louisville every week, uh, Burrow would have those kind of numbers too. So it's not uh, – he put up great numbers tonight. Louisville loses to Florida State, who's lost to everybody. So until, until that Alabama offense plays somebody – I'm not sold. You're gonna, they, maybe they are the greatest. You're going to have to show me. I'm not sold yet. On Tua? On Alabama. On, no, I'm not sold on that Alabama offense. Okay. You can't tell me. He's not played anybody that's a defense yet. I understand that, but they look pretty darn good to me. Uh, look, you well, got them coming look, in. Uh, maybe, first, they need uh, to, maybe, but maybe we need to reevaluate how we're looking at the LSU offense given the competition versus the Alabama offense given the competition. Well, November 3rd, you know, a lot of ground to find cover out. between now and then, but that'll be a night to find out. Thank you, Paul. And, and the other thing I will say, Go ahead. The, the league needs us to be undefeated against Georgia. That's a big game. college game day will be there if it's two versus five or two versus four. Game day will be there. That's a big uh, media draw. That's a big showcase for the SEC. Helps so I feel like we're going to get some share f- fair shakes officiating-wise down the line here. All right, Paul, appreciate it. Have a good Thank night, you, Paul. Fellas. Enjoy your ride home, man. Be careful. Buddy, Joe Burrow again, uh, 18 of 25 for 292, three touchdowns, uh, topped his yearly output. They matched it, as you said. Joe Burrow led the team in rushing. I, shame he couldn't get four more yards. I have the C note, but nine for 96. Yeah. Brossett, 20 for 72. Clyde Edwards Alaire, 11 for 67. And he ran hard. He was explosive tonight. Yeah. Uh, Justin Jefferson had a carry. Uh, Leonard Fournette got three carries in there. Receiving, uh, Justin Jefferson with five catches for 99 yards, uh, two touchdowns. Marshall and Chase both had a catch, and Chase had a touchdown. So, as I said, nine different people caught What's the Stephon football. What's Stephon Sullivan? Like Stephon five? Stephon Sullivan had uh, five for 50. You're right on the nose again. You're the guru. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's what you have with that. And then a, a couple of the team stats I want to go back over before we break and get to Brian Lazar with TigerBait.com. LSU had 33 first downs. Uh, Ole Miss had 18. LSU 7 of 12 on third down. That's good numbers. 573 yards total offense to 328 for the Rebels. LSU threw it 25 times, ran it 50. Uh, So took care of that. LSU 5 penalties for 40 yards. Ole Miss 17 penalties. When you're a bad team like Ole Miss and and you're a dirty team, you get those penalties. 17 penalties for 167 yards for Ole Miss, that certainly did not help their cause. LSU dominated time of possession, 35 and change to 24 and change. LSU did lose the two fumbles. And it's like what we've been saying all year long. It is a great teaching tool. Once again, they win the football game. They cover the spread easily, but yet there's plenty to clean up. Two turnovers this weekend. Well, three, but one got negated by a penalty. Missed tackles. Um, you know, a couple of other things. Drop passes. Yeah, drop passes, but Ole Miss had a lot of drops. And here's the other thing, the kicker, and I know Coach O is going to address it, but when A.J. Brown came back and cleaned out Kerry Vincent, LSU had a little buddy in them, and they lost control. And they this is a physical game, as we know. It, it, uh, that's got to be a penalty. Well, but that was well, stupid. Well, Greasy kept saying it was a clean no, hit but, or whatever. Yeah, but, I, I didn't. I thought that was a. But that's a defenseless player. I thought. So, I and agree. I thought that I, should have been 15 yards. It wasn't technically targeting, letter of the rule. But I mean, that should have been an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, in my opinion. Well, and and Greedy getting over there yapping to the to the sideline. Uh, Got to clean that up. Uh, come on, guys. Uh, 
We talk about the yappers. Well, and the umpire's got to get out of the way. Oh, my goodness, the umpire. Buddy. I don't know what he got paid, but he didn't get enough pay, pay tonight. Cause he's, he, in a, he, he's in an ice in a, bath right now. <laughs> he's in the whirlpool from now until uh, 3 o'clock in the morning. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to Tiger Stadium. We're going to hear from Brian Lazar of TigerBait.com. Uh, anything on injuries, Brian will have it for us. Don't go anywhere. If you're watching the Pelican Sports Post Game Show, you're listening, and you're on Facebook Live. Stay with us. These trips were like before you put the screens in the back seats. <laughs> I don't want to think about it. <laughs> are we there yet? I'm hungry. Where are we? Go, go, go. That game should keep them occupied. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Dad. Oh, in your face. Don't make me get back there. You don't need a new car to have new technology. Mike's Audio, conveniently located on Airline Highway near the corner of Blue Bonnet. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances, your dependable independent. Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances, your dependable independent with nationwide buying power. Live and play on your special day at Greystone. Create lasting memories in our newly remodeled reception hall at Greystone Country Club. For reservations and information, go to greystonecountryclub.com. Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugier, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugier Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we get back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. For total home pest control, who are you going to call? Call the bug man, 923-BUG. For total pest control for your home or business, call the original cell vent. Call the bug man today, 923-BUG. Welcome back to the Pelican Sports Post Game Show. Tigers win 45-16. They're now 5-0, most importantly, 2-0 in SEC play. Right now, it's our pleasure to be joined by Brian Lazar of TigerBait.com from Tiger Stadium. Brian, good morning. How are you? Good. How you all doing this morning? Good. What did Coach O have to say after the game, Brian? Well, you know, he said, first of all, it was a total team effort. Uh, obviously praised what he got out of Joe Burrow tonight. 
uh, real happy with the offensive line. You know, Donovan Campbell gets his first career start. He does a pretty good job at uh, left guard. Uh, he, he was happy to see Adrian McGee back at left tackle. He, he said that he anticipates that Sadiq Charles will be back in the lineup next week against Florida. And, you know, then when they get Brumfield back, you're starting to get uh, – you can start to piece together a pretty nice offensive line. Uh, you know, he, defensively, he said the defense struggled a bit tonight. Well, I mean, I, I thought the defense was pretty good for the first 27 minutes, and then, you know, they had that bad drive right there before halftime where Ole Miss got a field goal, which they would have gotten if Greedy Williams doesn't commit the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. And uh, But I thought that the defense bounced back. They did a lot of different things uh, to try to confuse Jordan Tamu. I thought they did a good job on the Ole Miss receivers. A.J. Brown caught nine passes for 72 yards, but 35 of those yards came on one pass play. So, uh, you know, uh, Ed, and I agree with him. He said, look, we have to stay hungry. This team has not played a complete game yet, which is true. And he said that uh, they got better teams coming up on the schedule, which is also true. But what we saw for the first 27 minutes tonight is probably as good as this team can play. And, if, you know, this team needs to, to do that as it gets into the, uh, you know, a rough three-week stretch here in October at Florida and then home games with Georgia and Mississippi State. Brian, uh, LSU had three touchdown passes going into the game. Joe threw three tonight, so obviously happy with that. But uh, had, had turned it over a couple times. It could have been a third time had it not been a penalty. Uh, he mentioned anything about ball security, and I know the, the the weather and the rain probably had a little bit to do with that. On the replay, it looked like Burrow would have probably recovered that fumble right around the three or four yard line, but the ball slipped out of his hands because it was wet. Talk about um, his comments about uh, well, how many takeaways they had tonight? One. One. So there was. So, so he said so they had a negative uh, turnover ratio tonight. That's the first time right. this he, year. Yeah, he, he said minus one's not good. He said two turnovers in the red zone, one by Burrow, one by uh, Nick Brossett. He said that's not good. Uh, so he said we have to get that fixed. So he, yeah, LSU came up with a game where they, you know, turned the ball over a couple times. Uh, so that's something that has to be cleaned up. Look, Burrow, uh, he had 388 yards of total offense tonight, which is the fourth highest in LSU school history. Brian, when's the last time a quarterback led the team in yards rushing for the game? Well, it's probably that game when, against Tennessee where Jordan Jefferson had the 80-yard yeah. run. Okay. It, it was we, probably that game. He went right up the middle. I remember that. But I, I don't think any LSU quarterback has ever had a night like this where he, he threw for 288 and ran for for 96. So, you know, I, I don't think that's ever happened. He's already, he, I think he threw for 292, I think is what it was tonight. Right. So his his 388 yards of total offense. Everybody knows the the record is the game Rohan Davey had at Alabama, uh, where he where they threw for about 500 yards in 2001. But 388 is the fourth most, and uh, you know Burrow had a very good night. Uh, Stephen Sullivan makes five catches. Justin Jefferson makes five catches. Racy McMath gets the first two receptions of his career. Uh, Jamar Chase with a very good catch on the touchdown. Uh, you know, Terrace Marshall has a big 52-yard play. So, you know, the passing game was, was good tonight. You know, Burrow was 72%, 18 out of 25. And uh, we'll, we'll just see now what happens next. We know, look, Ole Miss is horrible on defense. Right. As bad at defense as, as I have seen in the SEC. So, uh, you know, Florida's defense, which is really – Sort of been just okay this year. You know, good today. Pretty was pretty good tonight against Mississippi State. Yeah. So uh, you know, look, LSU uh, has a better team than Florida. They have the better quarterback, but you know, you got to go on the road, and you know, and Florida's capable of, of playing well defensively. So the LSU Florida games have recently have been close and right. usually. You know, have been close. You know, last two have been low scoring. So uh, we'll just uh, 
We'll see what happens when they play down in the swamp next Saturday afternoon. Brian, on, on the injury front, you mentioned while we were in break, uh, nothing significant. I know Harris was walked to the locker room. Any comments from Coach O or anything you were able to find out about anything with an injury, or does it look like just the normal game, bumps and bruises? Yeah, and nobody said anything about Harris. Uh, you know, Kerry Vincent left, but he came back in afterwards, and I don't think anybody else uh, really – uh, I, I think Christian Fulton hurt her shoulder, but he was back in the game. So, you know, the only one that, that left and never came back was Todd Harris. And, uh, I didn't hear anything on, on his status. Brian, we had a couple of comments earlier. People really like the numbers on the side of the hel helmet, the tribute to the 58 team, Billy Cannon's team. Uh, what would you think of the numbers on the side of the helmet? Yeah, that was nice. I mean, I remember, I mean, I can remember when they're doing that, and then they switched to the to the uh, LSU decal the logo on the side of the helmet. So I didn't realize this. I don't remember this. But they wore, uh, they said that they wore numbers on the helmets for the Mississippi State game last year, which was the goal game. So, uh, or maybe it was two years ago. They had that, had that recently. But, uh, you know, it was something different to honor, you know, the 58 team tonight. That, that was nice. Yeah, I thought it looked good. Hey, Brian, uh, saw them pressure a lot, not a lot of sacks. Uh, did he mention anything about, um, you know, pressure and and obviously uh, not sacking the quarterback? Would they sack the quarterback twice? Hey, he, he was not happy, so they're still not getting the pressure that they yeah. could get and they have to look. But it was funny, Matt Luke thought that, that they got good pressure on it. And I thought LSU – they didn't sack Tamu, but they got put pressure on him. I thought they put pressure on him. And they did a, you know, look, just like I thought, because of what they were doing in practice this week, they opened in the nickel with only two down linemen, and that was going to be the way they were going to go and attempt to get more pressure. But, uh, look, I really just think the case of this, when they're doing that, your two outside linebackers are uh, Michael Divinity and Andre Anthony. And, look, those two guys are not – Caleb Von Chase on. They're not Arden Key. You know, they're not Daniil Hunter. So they're just not – they're good pass rushers, but they're not great pass rushers. So uh, they're just going to have to keep mixing and matching and trying to do different things. But there was a few plays tonight where they had one down lineman on the field and took three outside linebackers, Anthony Divinity and Ray Thornton, and lined them up on the line of scrimmage. So uh, – you know, they just gonna have to keep mixing and matching. But you knew that the defense, uh, you knew the pass defense was gonna be better tonight after what happened last week against. They'll have to stop the run next week, though. Yeah, Felipe Frank. Well, look, next week is you you want to see Felipe Frank throw the ball. That, that's that's the whole thing. And uh, uh, boy, I, you know the way you know Mississippi State, the way they're playing, I, I don't know that they they're gonna be able to. I don't know if they're gonna can come on the road and beat somebody as good as LSU. Yeah. So now you're talking about, okay, let's forget about Georgia and Alabama. Let's forget about those two. So where can LSU lose? Well, they, they have to avoid getting upset at Florida and Texas A&M. So I think they're going to beat State at home. So if, if they can avoid road upsets uh, at Florida and Texas A&M, you're talking about a team that, that they're going to go no worse than 10 and 2. Brian, might CBS take the LSU Georgia game and put the Tigers back to back at two thirty? Uh look, if both those teams are undefeated, uh, I I can't see and yeah. they're both undefeated. They're going to both be at least top five in the country. I, I can't see CBS turning that down. I mean, I don't even know what other games are scheduled for that day yet. But if those those are both undefeated and both top five in the country, I'm sure that'll be the CBS. Game. Brian, tell us all about TigerBait.com and what you guys got happening over there. www.TigerBait.com. All the game coverage right now. Uh, have the uh, podcast up with Alex Leggett and, and me. Uh, we'll have game story and analysis up tonight. And then, uh, you know, everything, uh, grades, and then it's time to get ready for, for Florida. And, of course, Mike has all the latest from recruiting from over the weekend. 
Brian, I just looked at the rest of the SEC schedule on the 13th when LSU plays Georgia. It's not even close. LSU, Georgia is the top matchup, even if one of them had a loss. So we'll maybe find out about that on Monday, correct? Correct. Right. Brian, we appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Talk to you guys later. All right. Or they, unless they pull that eight-day rule thing, which they can No, nah, I don't think they will. They're going to go for it? Yeah, by, by the way, uh, you know, we haven't really mentioned it, but uh, obviously all of us over here at Pelican uh, want to talk about uh, what happened uh, just a little bit and, and wish uh, Wayne and, and his wife and all the people, the, the friends and the family that uh, everybody knows we lost Wade Sims. It was a tragic uh, uh, situation, and I know it really put a cloud on, on the whole city, and, you know, it, it's, a, it's a learning lesson. You hope that people can learn from it, but... Once again, to, to all those loved ones out there, the family members, and, and I know you could tell what Will Wade, and it, it's, it's going to, they'll have a real purpose to play for uh, Wade this year, but and they did a great job with the tribute at Tiger Stadium. It kind of uh, a shame with, uh, that it kind of put a little crinkle in uh, Billy Cannon's uh, celebration and all that. But, you know uh, what? Uh, I don't think Billy Cannon would have minded that. No, no. And, and so uh, they are the He was all about team. young people. All right. We got to take a break. We come back. Ronnie Rance, Sports uh, Shorts Radio, Sports Shorts TV. He's been in the locker room. We'll get his comments uh, after this pause on the Pelican Sports Post Game Show. Do stay with us. I knew I could get myself out of this. I just needed some hope and some help. I took the first step to recovery when I made the call. If you're depressed, drinking, and using drugs, you may need help. And the Affordable Care Act guarantees coverage of substance abuse. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment. I had problems just getting to sleep, drinking, and using pills every night. I feel like I'm losing control. I'm afraid I'll lose my job or even my family. Are you losing hope? You can recover and get back on track. Call now for hope and help with proven gentle recovery programs. I never thought that I could be somebody who didn't drink and use drugs. I have something to hold on to for strength. I'm in recovery, getting the help I need. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment with someone who cares. Call 800-383-8177. 800-383-8177. The Acord Eye Clinic has moved to a new office. Just minutes from the old office at 8280 YMCA Plaza Drive, Building 9. Dr. Shonda Acord and her staff welcome patients of all ages, including children and adults. They have a wide variety of frames and sunglasses, including Maui Gym. The Acord Eye Clinic features modern instruments and state-of-the-art technology including digital retinal scanning with Optomap. Hard to fit contact lenses, as well as professional care and service. Open Monday through Friday, eight till five. Call for an appointment, 225-767-EYES and visit the website, visionsource-br.com. The Acord Eye Clinic looks forward to seeing you. They said I could find you here. Why are you fishing? Our company's got to ship out two full color brochures and 20 color copies. You're killing me. It's done. Designed, printed, packaged, and shipped. How? You just got to know the right people. Baker Printing, the printing people. How come you get to fish in this private lake? Like I said, you just got to know the right people. You can know the right people too. Are you ready for this year's formal events? It's weddings, homecoming, Mardi Gras, prom, pageants. Debbie's Bridal is having an inventory blowout sale. Don't be left out. Prices range from 20% off to 80% off. Happening now. Debbie's Bridal, Burnside in Gonzales.
Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. Hello, hola, ni hao. Experience what the Baton Rouge International School can offer your children. Now welcoming displaced students for short and long-term stability. We continue with the Pelican Sports Post Game Show. Ronnie Rance, Sports Shorts Radio. Sports Shorts TV, big event coming up in Lafayette Wednesday night. He's going to tell you about that in a minute for the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame Foundation. Ronnie was in the locker room. He spoke to Joe Burrow, who threw for 292, rushed for 96, 72% completions. Ronnie, what did Joe Burrow have to say? Well, Joe was pretty He was pretty happy with the way that the offense, uh, you know, performed. I mean, he, he thought that, that they took a big step from last week. He, they were pretty balanced. They almost had 300 yards past 300 yards rushing and uh you know obviously if they can if the offensive line can hold up i mean this is a sign of possibly things to come for lsu yeah and then also grant delpit who has kind of emerged as one of the top defensive players for the tigers if not the top i mean this guy just he just makes plays and uh what, what did uh, delpit have to say after the game well i mean what a stat uh, stat sheet stuff for he's become right i mean he, the guy had an interception he had a sack he had you know, a bunch of tackles and the, the Eric Reed comparison that they made nationally in the Auburn game is, is, is starting to, to really look that way. I mean, and he just talked about how the, the confidence that he's playing with, but also give a lot of credit to the coaches. Dave Aranda feels like they're doing a great job of putting them in space and putting them in positions, to, you know, to be around the football. But, I mean, guys, he's, he's becoming the, the ball hawk of his defense, no question. Ronnie, let me ask you this question. You were on the sidelines. A lot of people commenting all post game about Ole Miss was dirty, a lot of chirping and jaw jacking going on. Uh, a, did you view that from the sidelines? And B, were there any comments in the LSU locker room about that? Well, Devin White was pretty fired up, you know, talking to him. He said he and uh, Greedy Williams are on a, a group thread text message with a bunch of star players in the SEC include a few Ole Miss players. And so they're all friends, but they all were talking a lot of trash, you know, on the on the group text. And, uh, and and if you watch, especially at the end of the first half, they had that silly call penalty on the LSU defense. You know, they were jaw jacking on the, on the sidelines in front of Ole Miss. They got that 15-yard, you know, unsportsmanlike penalty. So the first half was very chippy. There was a lot of trash talking going on both sides. And I think that whole – NWO versus DBU thing was uh, in full effect in the first half of this game. Jumbo, real quick, back to Burrow. Uh, looked like he was more decisive running the football. They had uh, nine carries. He also got hit a, a bunch. A couple questions on uh, Burrow as far as did he talk about um, the fact that he likes to run it and, and, and why is that still being implemented? Because as we've said on the show, if he gets hurt, Miles Brennan has not played a snap this year. Yeah, I mean, I asked him about that after the Auburn game, you know, because I was really surprised. That was the game, the coming up party, and the whole Joe Burrow running the football thing, you know. And and he said that he likes to do it. He said that it's a part of the offense. And, you know, Steve Ensminger is going to call that throughout the year. It wasn't just a scheme thing that they saw in the Auburn game. It, it's it's a it's something they think is a weapon, and I know it's a little it's a little disconcerting for me too buddy that you know uh they, they're taking a big risk you know it's, uh, but at the same time you know uh it, a i think it shows a lot of confidence that they have in, in brennan but they must really really believe that this offense cannot work without joe burrow being a part of the running game ronnie there's a special event wednesday night over in lafayette for the louisiana sports hall of fame foundation tell us about it and how people can get tickets yeah, that's coming up this Wednesday, October the 3rd, uh, over at La in Lafayette at Oakhorn Country Club. It's called An Evening with Archie Manning and Les Miles. Uh, so the two Louisiana Sports Hall of Famers, 
uh, less miles being inducted this year in the 2019 class coming up, and of course Archie years ago. That event's going to be taking place. It's open to the public. You can get tickets or buy tables. All you got to do is go to lasportshall.com and click on events. It's a fundraiser for the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame Museum, and of course two legends of uh, the game of football from the state of Louisiana. Hey, Roddy, you'll be down in Gainesville next week. We appreciate your time early this morning. Okay, Tommy. All right, buddy. Y'all have a good one. Thank you, Jumbo. All right, that's Ronnie Rance from Tiger Stadium. Good news on the no injury front. We'll find out about Harris, I guess, on, on Monday. We're going to take our final break of the night. We'll come back and put a wrap on a few things for you, and uh, we'll do all of that when we continue with more of the Pelican Sports Post Game Show. Final segment's up next. Stay with us. Experience what the Baton Rouge International School can offer your children. Now welcoming displaced students for short and long-term stability. I knew I could get myself out of this. I just needed some hope and some help. I took the first step to recovery when I made the call. If you're depressed, drinking, and using drugs, you may need help. And the Affordable Care Act guarantees coverage of substance abuse. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment. I had problems just getting to sleep, drinking, and using pills every night. I feel like I'm losing control. I'm afraid I'll lose my job or even my family. Are you losing hope? You can recover and get back on track. Call now for hope and help with proven gentle recovery programs. I never thought that I could be somebody who didn't drink and use drugs. I have something to hold on to for strength. I'm in recovery, getting the help I need. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment with someone who cares. Call 800-383-8177. 800-383-8177. When my wife and I started Relief Windows, what we were trying to do, what our goal was, to give a quality job to a homeowner. Everybody's scared of contractors. We wanted to change the mold of what that is. Not showing up on time, not answering the phone, somebody running with your money. The reason why you should pick Relief Windows to do your renovation of your home, windows, doors, hardy plank or siding, is because of the experience, quality, service of our company. Service is everything we have. It's the foundation of our company. We're gonna show up on time, we're gonna do the job right, over 60% of our customers is customer referral. We're a local company here in Baton Rouge, built in Baton Rouge, staying in Baton Rouge. Okay. The job's not done until you're happy and we're happy. It's built the old fashioned way, with a handshake. Here at Relief Windows, it's an honor to be official window door and signing company of LSU Athletics from one winning team to another. is an important medical announcement for anyone who has taken the chemotherapy drug Taxotere. If you or a loved one has developed alopecia or hair loss after taking the breast cancer drug Taxotere, you may be entitled to substantial compensation. While many chemotherapy drugs can cause temporary hair loss, Taxotere can cause permanent, irreversible loss of hair on the head, eyebrows, eyelashes, beard, and body. Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. The call is confidential and you may be eligible. You may not have been warned about the side effects of Taxotere. Your consultation is free. Call the Drug Watch hotline if you or a loved one has experienced permanent hair loss as a result of the chemotherapy drug Taxotere. But you must call now. Call 800-794-0738. 800-794-0738. Continue with the Pelican 
Cowboys post-game show. Real quick to the phone lines, pal from Baton Rouge. Good morning, pal. Hey, how you doing? Good. I uh, just want to call. I, I think. Uh, I think if anything, we got to give kudos to the offensive line coach for patching this thing together week after week. It's the fifth different starting group through five games. Uh, it's amazing to me that uh, that we've been able to perform at the level that we were performing with all the troubles we've had on, on the line with the guys going down. Uh, I, I think it's just fantastic. And the other thing is, is these young kids, they just they seem to find a way to get a little better every week. Well, the, big, the number that matters, pal, 5-0, and oh, and that's what they are. That's right. Now, all right, thank you, pal. we got to roll. Bye-bye. Hey, Talk don't forget, scoreboard, sports grill and catering, October 4, 5, and 6, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, ball, snow crabs, grand opening, food, family, fun, drink, music, sports, TVs everywhere, video walls, soundstage. Every day is a tailgate at scoreboard, sports grill and catering, and you got to connect with them, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You'll be able to see all the announcements, the specials, what's going on, events, etc. Scoreboard, sports grill, and catering. Be sure to connect on social media. Listen to all the radio and TV guys this coming week. We'll talk about it on Tigers Roar next Wednesday night. And uh, don't forget it. Like them on social media. Also, uh, this TV program will re-air Sunday morning 9 and 10.30. Also be available at youtube.com slash pelican broadcasting. And of course Tigers Roar next Wednesday night uh, with the very latest on everything. Well buddy, as we wrap it up, again the number that matters, LSU's 5-0. and oh. Got a tough one. Going to head down to the swamp. Gainesville, Florida Gators, 2.30 kick right after 2.30. We'll be on the air about 6 p.m. Big win for Dan Mullen going into Stark Vegas today, and uh, actually the ball game started at five o'clock. Got it. Got done very quickly. Their defense played appreciably better. It was a six-three ball game at at halftime, and uh, they they hold on to win by a touchdown. Felipe Franks, the former LSU commit, the quarterback. They've got an excellent run game, excellent defense. They send the kitchen sink. They'll blitz Joe Burrow. Going to have to pick up blitzes. Should be a born burner. We'll be here right after it. And don't forget, uh, Joe Burrow had a heck of a night tonight. No question about that. All right, don't forget all the radio, the television, the Tigers Roll on Wednesday, YouTube.com slash Pelican Broadcasting. Connect on Facebook, Pelican Broadcasting, Twitter, Pelican Sports, and connect with Scoreboard, Sports Grilling, Catering, Baton Rouge. It's uh, on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Scoreboards, Sports Grill, and Catering. Corsi Boulevard. Right next to Anton's Fine Jewelers, you got to check it out next Thursday, Friday, Saturday for the grand opening with the bald snow crabs. Buddy, great job as always. Thanks to all the calls and text messages. Thanks to all the folks on Facebook Live. Tigers win 45-16. We'll talk to you again very soon on Pelican Sports TV. health insurance. True or false? I can't get health insurance because I missed the open enrollment period. False. If you had a life change such as moving, getting married, having a child or a job loss, you are eligible to buy a new policy. I don't have a life changing event, so I can't get health insurance. False. You can purchase affordable short term policies even if it's not open enrollment. I have to spend hours shopping around for an insurance policy that's right for me. False. Call Healthcare will connect you with licensed agents that do the work for you, comparing hundreds of options, making sure you get a policy that fits all your needs at the best price. Call now and we'll connect you to a licensed agent that will answer all your questions. The call and the service are free, so what are you waiting for? Call Healthcare, getting the coverage you need at a price you can afford. Call now, representatives are standing by to assist you.
the feeling 